Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Anubha Rohatki with the Midday News. The headlines at G20 summit in Bali, Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for a return to the path of ceasefire and diplomacy to resolve the Ukraine conflict. In Gujarat, scrutiny of nomination papers for the first phase of assembly elections is underway. Tribal communities have enriched the life of the nation with their arts, crafts and hard work, says President, on the occasion of Janjate Gaurav Divas. Prime Minister says the nation is moving with the energy of Panch Pran to realize the dreams of Bhagwan Virsa Munda. In Mizoram, search and rescue operation continue at the site of collapsed stone quarry in Nahatyal district. And world population reaches 8 billion people today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has called for a return to the path of ceasefire and diplomacy to resolve the Ukraine conflict. He said the need of the hour is to show concrete and collective resolve to ensure peace, harmony and security in the world. Mr. Modi stated this while addressing the first working session of G20 on the issue of food and energy security in Bali, Indonesia today. Reminding the horrors of Second World War, the Prime Minister said, the leaders of that time made a serious effort to take the path of peace and now it's our turn. He said climate change, COVID-19 pandemic, the developments in Ukraine and the global problems associated with it have caused havoc in the world and the global supply chains are in ruins. He added that the onus of creating a new world order for the post-COVID period lies on our shoulders. Referring to India's G20 presidency next year, Mr. Modi expressed confidence that next year, when the G20 meets in the holy land of Buddha and Gandhi, it will agree to convey a strong message of peace to the world. Talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, the Prime Minister said India ensured food security for its 1.3 billion citizens. At the same time, food grains were also supplied to many countries in need. He said the current shortage of fertilizers in terms of food security is also a huge crisis. He added that today's fertilizer shortage is tomorrow's food crisis for which the world will not have a solution. The Prime Minister stressed on the need to build a mutual agreement to maintain the supply chain of both manure and food grains. He said India is promoting natural farming and repopularizing nutritious and traditional food grains like millets for sustainable food security. A report. The Prime Minister opposed promotion of any restrictions on the supply of energy. He emphasized that stability in the energy market should be ensured. His remarks came in the backdrop of Western countries' call against procurement of Russian oil and gas. Ahead of G20 session, Mr. Modi also held brief discussions with world leaders on the sideline of the summit. Mr. Modi interacted with U.S. President Joe Biden. The two leaders shared warm hug at Bali. With Divakar Bhupendra Singh, AI News Delhi. Today is a Janjate Gaurav Divas. The government has declared 15th November as Janjate Gaurav Divas, dedicated to the memory of brave tribal freedom fighters. 15th November is the birth anniversary of Birsa Munda, who is revered as Bhagwan by tribal communities across the country. Birsa Munda was an iconic freedom fighter, social reformer and revered tribal leader who fought bravely against the exploitative system of the British colonial government. On this occasion, President Draupadi Murmu has extended her greetings to the nation and said that tribal communities made great contributions to the freedom struggle. In a tweet, the President said, Tribal communities have enriched the life of the nation with their arts, crafts and hard work. Their lifestyle offers the world lessons in nurturing nature. Mrs. Murmu said tribal communities made great contributions to the freedom struggle. She added that tribal people's contribution to the nation's journey since independence is no less significant. The President also paid homage to Bhagwan Birsa Munda at his village Ulihatu in Kunti district of Charkhand. Governor Ramesh Bais, Chief Minister Hemant Soren, Union Tribal Affairs Minister Arjun Munda, Union Minister of State for Education Annapurna Devi and State Social Welfare Minister Joba Manji also paid their tributes to the freedom fighter. President Draupadi Murmu today paid floral tributes and garlanded the statue of Bhagwan Birsa Munda on the occasion of 2nd Janjatiya Gaurav Divas. The President also visited the native village of Lord Birsa Munda at Ulihatu in Khunti district of Jharkhand. This is the maiden visit of any President to Khunti district post-independence. 
On this occasion, the president also met the descendants of Dharti Aba Birsa Munda. This is Shilpi with Jyotsna Sheila from Khoti for AIR News. Later in the day, the president will address a Janjatya Samagam in Shahadul, Madhya Pradesh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said that the nation is moving with the energy of Panch Pran to realize the dreams of Bhagwan Birsa Munda and crores of Janjatya brave hearts. The Panch Pran of Amrit Kal is the goal of developed India to remove any trace of the colonial mindset, take pride in our roots, unity and sense of duty among citizens. In a video message, Mr. Modi greeted the nation on the occasion of the Janjatya Gaurav Divas. आज पूरा देश श्रद्धा और सम्मान के साथ भगवान बिरसा मुंडा की जन्म जयंती मना रहा है मैं देश के महान सपूत महान क्रांतिकारी भगवान बिरसा मुंडा को आदर पूर्वक नमन करता हूँ 15 नवंबर की ये तारीख भारत की आदिवासी परंपरा के गौरव गान का एक विशेष दिन है The Prime Minister listed measures to acknowledge and celebrate tribal contribution. He talked about the tribal museums in various parts of the country and schemes like Jandhan, Gobardhan, Vandhan, self-help groups and Mission Indradhanush that have benefited the tribal community. The Prime Minister also highlighted the valor, community life and inclusion of the Adivasi Samaj. He said, India has to give shape to its future by learning from this grand legacy. आदिवासी समाज में शौर्य भी है प्रकृति के साथ सहजीवन और समावेश भी है इस भव्य विरासत से सीखकर भारत को अपने भविष्य को आकार देना है मुझे विश्वास है जनजातीय गौरव दिवस इस दिशा में हमारे लिए एक अवसर बनेगा एक माध्यम बनेगा टुडे इज द ट्वेंटी सेकेंड स्टेट फाउंडेशन डे ऑफ झारखंड The President, the Vice President and the Prime Minister have greeted the people of Jharkhand on this day. In a tweet, President Draupadi Murmu said, the people of Jharkhand have to cherish their culture, traditions and customs and establish new dimensions of eco-friendly development. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar said, blessed with abundant natural resources, minerals and rich biodiversity, Jharkhand has enriched India and contributed immensely towards national development. Prime Minister Narendra Modi wished that the state which has rich natural resources and tribal art and culture attains the heights of progress. On this occasion, Chief Minister Hemant Soren will inaugurate four new schemes for the benefit of economically weaker and meritorious students at Morabadi Ground in Ranchi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक टू द मिड डे न्यूज In Gujarat, scrutiny of nomination papers for 89 seats in the first phase of assembly elections is underway. For the first phase, the names can be withdrawn till Thursday, that is 17th November. Voting for the first phase will be held on December 1st. In Gujarat, 1,362 nomination papers have been filed for the first phase, while for the 93 seats of the second phase, so far 95 candidates have filed their nominations. Nominations can be filed for the second phase till November 17. The voting for this phase will be held on December 5, while the counting of votes for both the phases will be held simultaneously on December 8. With Aparna Khunt, Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Ahmedabad. The BJP has fielded Raghuraj Singh Shakya against Samajwadi Party leader Dimple Yadav for the Manpuri Lok Sabha bypoll. The bypoll on this seat was necessitated following the demise of Samajwadi Party founder and MP Mulayam Singh Yadav. The BJP also released the names of candidates for by-elections to two assembly seats in UP and one each in Rajasthan, Bihar and Chhattisgarh. It has given ticket to Akash Saxena from Ranpur and Rajkumar Saini from Khatoli Assembly seat in UP, while Kedar Prasad Gupta will fight from Kurni Assembly's constituency in Bihar. 
In Mizoram, eight bodies out of 12 missing people were recovered from the debris of a stone quarry that collapsed due to a massive landslide in Nathyal district yesterday. Deputy Commissioner of the district, R. Lalban Sangha, said the search operations that began last night will continue till all the missing persons are found. National Disaster Response Force, Assam Rifles and Border Security Force, along with local police and people, are participating in the search operation. Thirteen people were working when the massive landslide took place at the Stone Quarry. Only one worker managed to ex- escape. The world population has reached 8 billion people today, according to the United Nations estimates. The UN's Population Division Director, John Wilmoth, said that reaching 8 billion people is a sign of human success, but it is also a great risk for our future. According to the World Population Prospect Report 2022, India is projected to surpass China as the world's most populous country during 2023. The annual World Population Prospect Report released yesterday also notes that the global population is growing at its slowest rate since 1950, having fallen to less than 1% in 2020. The latest projections by the United Nations suggest that the global population could grow to around 8.5 billion in 2030, 9.7 billion in 2050 and 10.4 billion in 2100. The 18th edition of Indo-U.S. Joint Training Exercise, Yudh Abhyas 22, is scheduled to be conducted in Uttarakhand this month. Exercise Yudh Abhyas is conducted annually between India and the USA with the aim of exchanging best practices, tactics, techniques and procedures between the armies of the two nations. The previous edition of this exercise was conducted at Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson, Alaska in USA in October last year. The U.S. Army soldiers of 2nd Brigade of the 11th Airborne Division and Indian Army soldiers from the Assam Regiment will participate in the exercise. The schedule will include all operations related to peacekeeping and peace enforcement. The joint exercise will also focus on humanitarian assistance and disaster relief operations. Union Jal Shakti Minister Gajendra Singh Shekhawat today said the country is spearheading a new wave of socio-economic prosperity, fueled by cutting-edge technology and innovation. Speaking after inaugurating the GeoSmart India 2022 summit in Hyderabad, he said the country is advancing towards an era of sustainable development right from the grassroots level and aimed at eradicating poverty, combating climate change and improving business and living standards. Stating that the geospatial information has emerged as a key tool for development in the country, he said the government released the guidelines for geospatial data, paving way for its usage across various sectors of the economy. An international travelling exhibition, Vaccines Injecting Hope, was inaugurated by Union Minister of State for Culture, Arjun Ram Meghwal, at National Science Centre, NCSM, in New Delhi this morning. The NCSM and Science Museum Group London have joined hands to tell the story of the global effort to develop vaccines at higher speed. The exhibition aims to decipher the science of vaccines and tell the story of how they were developed. The International Travelling Exhibition will be on display at National Science Centre till 18th June 2023. It will be open to the public from 9.30am to 6pm daily. Later, the exhibition will travel to Nagpur, Mumbai, Bengaluru and Kolkata. Now let's have a look at the weather forecast across the country. National Capital Delhi is likely to have partly cloudy sky. Mumbai is likely to have mainly clear sky. Kolkata will have mainly clear sky. Chain is expected to have partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunder shower. Jammu and Kashmir will have partly cloudy sky. In Srinagar, minimum temperature will be 5 degrees Celsius and maximum around 12 degrees. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. At G20 summit in Bali, Prime Minister Narendra Modi calls for a return to the path of ceasefire and diplomacy to resolve the Ukraine conflict. In Gujarat, scrutiny of nomination papers for the first phase of assembly elections is underway. Tribal communities have enriched the life of nation with their arts, crafts and hard work, says President on the occasion of Janjate Gaurav Divas. Prime Minister says the nation is moving with the energy of Panch Pran to realize the dreams of Bhagwan Birsa Munda. In Mizoram, search and rescue operation continues at the site of the collapsed stone quarry in Nahatyal district. And world population reaches 8 billion people today. And with that, we end the Midday News.